My name is Joseph Duraney, and I am the Chair of Cardiovascular Surgery at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester with an area of interest in pediatric and congenital heart disease. Today we are going to talk about the management of neonatal Epstein anomaly. There are approximately 100 births each year with Epstein anomaly in the United States. Mayo Clinic has a long-standing history of the care in patients with Epstein malformation. We have performed approximately 1,000 operations over the last 40 years and our experience with the newborn and infant continues to grow substantially. The diagnosis is generally made on prenatal ultrasound. This is helpful to the family because it allows arrangements for delivery and travel if so desired to a center with experience. Mortality for the symptomatic newborn with Epstein's anomaly approaches 50%. There is a role for surgery but there is no clear consensus with regard to treatment pathway. Multiple surgical options exist, and the choice depends mostly on the clinical situation and the institutional and surgeon experience. The decision to proceed with surgery almost always depends on the level of stability of the baby. The risk of surgery for surgical repair of Epstein's anomaly continues to be the highest of all congenital heart defects and approaches 20 to 30 percent even in the most experienced hands. The postnatal echocardiogram confirms the diagnosis and outlines anatomy of the valve in terms of suitability for repair and importantly outlines anatomy with regard to the pulmonary valve, whether or not there is either anatomic or functional pulmonary atresia. Treatment pathways begin with medical management and in a stable baby consists of oxygen therapy, prostaglandin therapy, and observation. Medical support is weaned, the baby is followed, and if all continues to progress well, surgery is delayed for months or years down the road. The unstable baby requires intubation and mechanical ventilation with aggressive medical therapy that includes nitric oxide and prostaglandin therapy. At this stage, it is important to differentiate functional pulmonary atresia from anatomic pulmonary atresia. If there is functional pulmonary atresia, medical therapy is weaned and we look for improvement and observation. If medical therapy weaning results in persistent cyanosis or hemodynamic instability, then surgery is inevitable. In contrast, babies with anatomic pulmonary atresia will always require surgery. What you do depends on other anatomic findings. When there is severe tricuspid regurgitation and a small right ventricle, then the single ventricle pathway is oftentimes preferred. However, if there is severe tricuspid regurgitation and good right ventricular size and function, then our preference is the two ventricle pathway. In rare situations, the right ventricle may be small with only mild tricuspid regurgitation and only a blalock tausick shunt may be required in the newborn period uh, with right reduction atrioplasty to allow space for the lungs that may be compromised. Functional pulmonary atresia with good left ventricular size and function and only mild tricuspid regurgitation may respond to medical treatment only without the need for early surgery. When there is severe tricuspid regurgitation and there is relative hemodynamic stability, the two ventricle repair is the preferred option by most experienced centers. The unstable situation and severe tricuspid regurgitation is more likely to result in going down the single ventricle pathway unless valve anatomy is very favorable for repair and the surgeon is very comfortable doing it. In terms of the valve repair strategies that are applied in the neonate, the most common treatment pathway has been monocusp tricuspid valve repair. The question of the application of the cone repair, which is the most anatomic repair, comes up all the time. And in our opinion, we believe it should be applied selectively depending upon patient stability and surgeon experience. In summary, Epstein's malformation is one of the highest risk anomalies in the newborn period. Treatment pathways vary depending upon clinical stability and cardiac anatomy. Delivery of the baby in an environment with experience 
and an organized team approach with neonatal critical care, maternal fetal medicine, cardiology, and surgery can optimize outcome. Mayo Clinic has one of the largest, most integrated heart programs in the world with over 300 heart specialists working together to treat more than 120 heart conditions and diseases. Mayo Clinic is one of the nation's highest rated heart care programs by US News and World Report. We provide trusted heart answers that focus on you. Thank you for your attention.